morning, YouTubers. <laughs> On today's episode, we are going to take a look at fixing bad wells. In front of us here, I have two absolutely terrible wells. I would say they're both equally as bad. I wouldn't say one's better than or worse than the other. So a gentleman emailed me and asked me what the best way to fix bad welds are, such as something like what I have in front of me. So great topic for a video. There's a lot of things you can do to fix these. I'm going to do the right way and the wrong way. So let's get into it. All right, so we've identified our terrible weld. Hopefully it's in a fairly accessible place. If this is in an inaccessible place, then you're going to definitely have limited options. So now for most of you guys, because you're a home gamer or, you know, semi-professional and you just have welders and grinders and that sort of thing, uh, your best options are going to be using a grinder. Now you can use a straight cutoff disc and come in here and basically make cuts. You want to be very careful doing that because this is not meant to have side load put on it where you're like doing this as you're grinding. This is very thin. They do make some that are thicker than this. And I'll show you here. That are thicker than this that you could put a little bit of side load on, but that is not a cutoff wheel. So you want to be very careful using one of these in order to do that because it's liable to blow up on you. Now you have your standard flap disc. This is not really going to do very well because you can't push into the corner. There's no grit on the side here. They do make versions of these that are overlapped over the side to where you can grind in like this. But honestly, those things are so expensive. They're like three to four times the cost of one of these. And it's still not going to get into the root. Okay. And that's the most important thing is, is that we want to get all this material off all the way down to the root to clean, visibly clean metal and then weld it. So what I find myself using most often is what's known as just a hard rock wheel. So one of these, you can put side load on, you can angle it in here. Again, since this piece is accessible, it's going to be a little bit easier for us. If it's in an inaccessible place, you may have to come up with other solutions. One of which, a die grinder such as this with a carbide burr in it. So this is a little bit big of one to use for this. It probably would work to a certain extent. But by running this carbide burr in there, you can chew most of this out. Which in an inaccessible place, this works pretty good. On an industrial side, the easiest way to fix a weld like this would be what's known as carbon arc or air arc gouging. Without going in too much detail, essentially, uh, you it's like reverse welding. You run with a carbon rod that transmits an arc but doesn't deposit metal. So you you have an arc with it, and then you blast air from close to the rod to wash and blow all the metal away. It works literally like reverse welding. This would be a great job for that because you could just melt all this off down the base metal and then clean it up and re-weld it. That's very common, especially in uh, indus industrial type repairs like on big equipment and heavy plate, like that's the way to go. Like you, you can't spend three days grinding out a bad weld. It's just too inefficient. So I'm going to use, uh, I'll start out with the hard rock and I'm going to start cleaning this off. Um, I will tack this down to the table just because it's hard to clamp this to anything. So that'll be a little bit safer. I don't mean to interject on this video and add more stuff and lengthen this anymore. But speaking of safety, I just wanted to mention a couple things real quick. One is I tend not to use a guard on an angle grinder. Now the angle grinder I use is a little Milwaukee battery one. I have a lot of bigger ones and they're all corded of course. Those I run with the guards on. The reason being, and I'm not saying that I'm not stupid, but the Milwaukee grinder doesn't really have that much RPM or that much power. 
When you start getting into four and a half inch corded grinders, like the bigger ones, like the 11 amp plus, those things could literally cut half your finger off in an instant. So my recommendation is, is to always use the grinder guard, honestly. I should as well. I just don't sometimes. And like I said, it's, it's with the smaller battery powered one. The other thing is, is that always wear ear and eye protection. Now, I'm not the best at wearing hearing protection, but realistically, you don't want to be 40 years old and deaf and grinding is very loud, among other things. So hearing protection isn't a bad idea. And I always wear eye protection. If you don't um, have eye protection, you go use a wire wheel. You're asking to get a piece of the a something or a wire in your eye, and it's no fun getting that pulled out in the hospital. So be smart about it. Wear proper safety equipment. I'm not your father, I'm not your head of safety. I can't tell you what to do, but be smart about it. Thanks. So now this cleaned up a little bit easier than I expected simply because there was no penetration to the root. So just by buffing all of that junk off, we got a pretty clean edge there. Now I did cut through the tack here so the plate's a little loose, but that went easier than I suspected. Normally you would have some root penetration, and in that case you might have to grind quite a long ways into that root in order to get it cleaned out. But right now we're set to where we can re-weld this. So I'm just going to grab a 7018, run a single pass on it after I tack it, and then call it good. And then we'll go to the other plate. All right, so we got the single pass on there. This thing's pretty much fixed. I'm still gonna do a cut and etch just so we can look at it. I had my machine on 6010 settings, so I was wondering why as I got the art gap closer, it started to just chew away, eat at that plate like the amperage was shooting up. Well, I had the dig set at 70%, so my bad on that. It's still welded fine. I'm gonna cut this plate off and then we're gonna look at the other one. So now this weld, equally as bad as the other one, probably don't have much in a way of root fusion. Now you saw how grinding it out and prepping it, and that's the way to go. Like we're gonna get a pretty clean weld, right? What I'm gonna do on this is just step up to uh, eighth inch 6010 right here. And then I'm just gonna run a pass through here at probably 95 amps and just weld clean over this. Now I may be able to create a weld that looks pretty decent, but 
upon cutting and etching it, we're going to see really what's going on. All right. Camera's battery died, didn't realize it. Gotta love it. So this was that weld, the second weld I did, that was equally as terrible as the first. All I did is put a 6010 on the stinger and run clean over it. Overall, I welded over it pretty decent. You would never suspect the problems that are inside of this are there just by visual appearance. So I'm going to bust uh, this one off of the tack and finish cleaning it up. And then we're going to cut and etch these and look at what's inside. All right, guys. Got the uh, cut and etch done. Let's start out with the 7018. So this guy cut and uh, all the weld out, got down to the root, which the original weld that was on here really hadn't penetrated anything. And once it was clean, ran over it with uh, 7018, about 120 amps. Definitely could have ran a little bit more amperage, but let's take a look. Now, there isn't a whole lot of root penetration there. And that has a lot to do with the angle of the rod. So I ended up hitting the lower plate more than the top plate. My hand positioning just wasn't very good with the camera around me to get a little bit better of an angle. But you can clearly see, got uh, penetration just uh, a little bit past where the two plates intersect. But overall, not too bad. Take a look at the other side. Same deal. That little line there, you can see on this side of the plate has the same deal. This was uh, a rounded edge. Had it been milled flat or sanded flat, you wouldn't have that. That isn't like trap porosity or anything. It's just because the plates aren't flat. Again, I hit the bottom plate more than the top. You can see how that weld is sunk in a little bit. Yeah, you can see overall looks pretty good. That's a proper repair. Now this guy, the reason I picked uh, 6010 is that it has a reputation, which is earned for a reason, to pretty much burn through anything. And I ran this at, I think, 96 or 7 amps, somewhere around there, with a dig setting of 70%. And I pushed it in there and chewed away as much as I could out of there. Not the prettiest looking weld by any means. But there's no question that there's a weld there. question is, what is it hiding? Well, if you look here, surprisingly enough, all of the weld is solid so all that slag that was sitting on top apparently was removed during the process however there is no root fusion in this the results actually are better than i expected but that's not saying much and you look on this side Absolutely no root fusion, and there's likely slag in there. You can see it in there, it looks like it. The problem with this is, is that even though there's a weld here, without any of that root fusion there, as this plate gets bent over, which is going to be a lot easier to do than with the 7018, there's just very minimal strength compared to what should be there. Thanks for sticking around for the whole video, guys. I guess we didn't learn anything too surprising here. If you lay a bad weld, grind it out and re-weld it. Fix it right. Or like my father sometimes said, putty and paint makes me the welder I ain't. You can take that approach, but don't expect good results. Thanks.